Mexico. Uh, hello, everybody, and good afternoon to you all. Um, I would yeah, like to say a couple of words just before uh, Dan Steele from CSE, uh, who is the task leader for the Community Clouds team, uh, will introduce you uh, Jean Cloud Flow in more detail. <clears throat> so the work on, on uh, developing the joint, joint uh, Community Cloud started already years ago. Um, while separate national um, community clouds were available in many, many countries. But this interest and uh, possibility of the NRN community working together and um, building cloud offerings together was indicated by the NRNs at several strategic discussions and surveys already uh, much earlier before this present um, giant project started. So as the, as the uh, time changes, technology changes, uh, um, our needs change, um, we have to be uh, flexible in the cloud team. And the giant cloud flow um, grew out from deeper analysis uh, about what could be uh, this joint uh, cloud offering for research um, as our community core users. Um, um, that is not offered by any other infrastructure or um, project um, in the federated way joining the NRN resources and, and technical expertise. So with this, the giant cloud flow uh, is the very first joint NRN based community cloud offering for researchers on behalf of Jean. And um, although Dan will um, uh, introduce uh, this story behind it and what it is in more detail, I also want to thank all these NRNs who have been uh, working on this solution uh, together to bring this uh, uh, special opportunity of giant uh, to the European users and, and be as an example, not only uh, for the European uh, collaboration possibilities, but also for the other world regions. So uh, a big thank you to all the NRNs and technical uh, and non-technical specialists who have uh, helped to build this uh, solution here. And uh, I would like to say uh, thank you on behalf of the Asian Cloud team. So. Thank you very thank much, you. Maria, for the introduction and the very nice words. Uh, Dan, now you have the honor to continue oh. with the info show. Very good. Thanks a lot, Darko. And, uh... And Maria, I hope you guys can can hear me, hear me all right. So uh, so let's see. I'll I'll share my screen here. And uh, yes, good. Yes. So uh, so right. So hello everyone. My name is. My name is Dan, and and unless as, uh, I work at uh, at CSC Finland, and uh, and Ijan, they actually represent Nordnet. So uh, really good to be with with you he here this uh, this afternoon. So uh, moving towards spring, even also up here in the in the Nordics. So uh, even though we actually still have a lot of snow in the streets, so uh, so it's been a pretty 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 sort of cold and snowy winter here. So uh, a lot of shoveling this year, but we're moving towards summer and, and that's a good thing. So uh, so for our session today here, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the uh, Giant Cloudflow service, service, which is something that we've been working on in Work Package for cloud services for, for some. So, uh, so uh, and I've structured this talk in the in the following way. So I'm I'm going to start off with uh, with a bit of history of what we originally planned to do, then describe the service uh, in, uh, uh, and and who we sort of are expecting to have an interest in it, use cases and so on, and then uh, show uh, uh, the key components and and the benefits and go go through. Uh, uh, the architecture and after that kind of talk about what the expectations are that we have for the service and, uh, and service uptake and, and how we see the future roadmap of the service and the development that we plan to do. So th that's in a nutshell what I intend to, to talk about today. 
So, uh, so goal, the goal here, so, so well, originally when this task was planned back in, in, in 2018 timeframe, Marie already sort of alluded to that a little bit. Uh, I'm, idea I'm, was really- I'm sorry, uh, really... Dan, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but your, your slides are pretty foggy. I actually, I can't read it, uh, text on them. And also I received in chat uh, a message from the others. Yeah, let me, let me sort of, let me sort of give, do it, give it a second shot. Sorry for interruption. Yeah, no problem, no problem. How does this look? Oh, nice, it's much better. Much better, okay, yes. that's cool. Very good. So, uh, so, so let's, apparently it's the restart sort of did the trick. So, uh, so yeah, so I was saying that, 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 and Maria already sort of alluded to it a little bit, that, that originally when this, this task was planned back in, in the 2018 timeframe, the idea was, was, was to help uh, uh, NRES identify suitable community cloud services to, to offer jointly. So uh, Maria, Maria already pointed out, pointed that out. So, so, but, but with the special attention here to services that would be offering container-based uh, virtualization capabilities. And, uh, and, uh, and when we talk about community cloud services here, then, then, then our context is really, the meaning here is really these homegrown and run cloud infrastructures, such as OpenStack, uh, own cloud, Kubernetes, container clouds, uh, these, type of, uh, these type of environments, and then support and try to coordinate development efforts which then would establish such uh, this type of uh, European services, pan-European services, and having the NRENs pooling these resources and collaborating on this uh, on this uh, delivery. So, uh, so to give you some additional context, I think it's I think it's fair to say that this emphasis on community clouds in Gen 4 3 really came about as kind of a counter reaction to 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 the commercial cloud activities in Gen 4 2. Uh, so, so Dan, uh, I'm yeah. really sorry again, but uh, this slide become again absolutely foggy, and uh, I can't uh, read this uh, this text. You know, I don't know really why. Uh huh. Okay. It was clear in the beginning, but uh, during the time it became foggy. <clears throat> I, I Interesting. Really let's see. Let's see if I actually share it. Share it. Uh, I, I, I maybe Darko can also share the, the same slides on his screen. Yeah. Yeah. If that sort of would work better, I'll sort of I'll sort of do a do a shot here with. Uh... Okay. That's fine. Now now it's fine. <laughs> okay. Let's see how long. Let's let's see how long it's gonna. <laughs> I see this is the first time. I really don't know what's happening. Maybe it's the analysis that you are using, Dan. I'm sorry? Maybe it's the analysis that you are using. It's incompatible, the analysis of the screen that you have. Could be, but I sort of run this, I was going to say hundreds of times okay. in the past. One thing I'm noticing here is that you're using enhanced encryption on a zoom okay yeah it starts to blur <laughs> again yeah, again yes <laughs> the dynamic thing it's should i try to reconnect okay, okay. so uh, or let's see if, if if you could sort of be so kind darko mm -hmm. and uh and let's see I'll, I'll tell you when to sort of switch i'll stop sharing and then you can send me your presentation also i can share uh, i can share it instead of you here uh, you have problem. yeah or is it so that I should just just sort of try to uh, try to sort of reconnect and let's see if that sort of might do the trick. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we have a bandwidth problem here of some sort. What do you guys What do you guys think? Uh, let me disconnect. So uh, please leave. Please please let me in <laughs> once again. <laughs> so 
I think that is not a problem if your main presenter left the conference. <laughs> oh, Dan still is here. Should we admit him or not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. back in let's see now if we could sort of get this to hi then we are just started <clears throat> hmm. i don't know it now is excellent aggregate and scale up capable national yeah. service everything is okay this moment <clears throat> Let's see. This is still sort of showing up, all right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so, okay, right. Let's let's see now. So, uh, so, so, I think I, I was talking about about you know this counter reaction to uh, to commercial cloud activities. And Darko, just just interrupt me if it, uh, this doesn't work, and we'll sort of I'll send you the slide set. But but let's see let's see if this this kind of reboot did the trick. Okay. I certainly hope it did. So, uh, so, uh, so, so, yeah. So, so, uh, so, you know, in, in mm -hmm. Giant, and this, there's been, a, been a, in Gen Gen four two, obviously, a lot of activities around the the Giant IS framework. So many NRENs obviously, and uh, many NRENs obviously run their own community clouds as well, and have invested quite a bit in them, in their infrastructure. And it certainly made sense from from their perspective to see what what potentially could be done at the European level and see if we could collaborate and share experiences and also resources in the in the open source cloud technology space. So, so we started working on the business case and, and, and after some time it became evident that certainly some NRENs are running very nice home built cloud environments, but most NRENs are bound quite exclusively to serve their national membership chips and only their national memberships not necessarily international customers or projects. So we realized consuming, consuming cloud services across borders and having cross-border compensation would be quite, quite challenging. And, and, and in those days, we were kind of hoping that other European projects, EOSC, should show the, could show the way regarding the business model. So, uh, but a bit, a bit, bit of a year ago, so, so this was at, at the PMC in Ljubljana, it sort of became clear that nah, this is not gonna happen in the very near future and in the community cloud session. And we had quite a, a lively and fruitful debate, debate about, about this. So, uh, and, uh, and the result was that we, we started to look for alternative ways of capitalizing on, uh, on NREN cloud resources. And this is what I'm presenting today. So, so in 2018, the NRENs were primarily running IAS in production, so infrastructure as a service. But, uh, but, but early, early last year, quite a few had these Kubernetes container clouds up and running in production. And, and we started thinking that this would offer a much more flexible platform for, for running jobs across clouds. And, uh, and it turned out that most of the NRENs taking part in task four are also active or affiliated in uh, in Elixir, so uh, so so the last large uh, life science uh, initiative in Europe and 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 our colleagues at at, at, at GRNet so in Greece pointed out that uh, Elixir has been working on running bioinformatics workflows cross border on container cloud container clouds already for some time. So uh, so we took a look closer look on the Elixir technology and, and decided that after, after a bit of discussions, for sure, so a bit, bit, of, a bit, of, bit of resistance, resistance, you know, concerns, but, but, but to give, a, give it a shot. And, and we call this, this resulting service, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beta right now, then, uh, then we call this Giant Cloudflow, and it's an integrated cloud platform for defining and implementing uh, in, implementing compute uh, resources and workflows within a single unified and easy to use dashboard, at least we think so, uh, user specified workflows using a scripting language. 
and and these workflows deploy containers on top of NREN container uh, container clouds. So uh, so this the software it's all open source it's under MIT license and it's largely based on work done by by the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health and Elixir. So so we're capitalizing on that good work. So use their components, but we have. Uh, but, but on top of entering infrastructure and also building building user and tailoring the user interface towards towards a, uh, how should I say an entering customer customer base. So uh, so then uh, and I should uh, change the screen here uh, slide here is uh, is everything still all right? Can you see the slides, Darko? Yes, Maria. Uh, everything is perfect. Up. Good. So uh, apparently the re login login sort of did the trick. So uh, so so yeah. So what kind of uh, user projects could then be be interested in this type of a service? Well, it turns out that running workflows is, is is really popular in a number of areas. So uh, at uh, so at my my institution at, at CSE here in Finland, we have people spending spending actually good money on on the order of up to to hundreds of thousands of euros per project on on training neural neural nets for speech recognition, we're having access to to local native data is a key key issue. Then we have traditional research like chemistry and physics applications in in numerical weather prediction and earth observations. Uh, so so well, just to give an example, then one of our participants in uh, in the task, then they they host host data for the European Space Agency. So that's that's the guys at, at GRNet and. Uh, and I'm sure that there are other other examples, but but these are areas where we've had contact with users who have shown kind of a preliminary interest in, in containerized software or containerizing their software and try out running in a in a container cloud. So uh, you probably noticed that there's no bioinformatics listed here, and there's uh, there's good reason for that. Cases in in that space are well taken care of by, by the Elixir community and, and within the scope of, of Elixir West, as it's called. And, uh, and as, I, as I mentioned, we really rely on the, rely on the Elixir roadmap in terms of, of, of the platform components, but we hope that the work that we do and, and will do will, will be used for, for, the whole, uh, for the whole community. So, uh, So, uh, so about the key components here. So, key component in benefit is is really that we we want to allow the researchers to move compute close to where the data is located. But for for that to happen, the user needs to have access to the distant clouds where the workloads will execute. And this kind of implies that that the user needs to have a federated access to the clouds within an AI framework. So, so here, of course, we intend to capitalize on giant trust and identity management and uh, particularly edu teams, which is great. So this, this part is still work in progress here, but we have high hopes for it to, to really provide some, some, unique, some unique features. And, and then finally, secure authentication and transmission of information between parties that's handled by, by so-called JSON web tokens JWT tokens, and that's something with the guys in Elixir have been working on, and, and I'll sort of give uh, give a little bit more information on that part later on in the in the presentation. So, uh, so we uh, we believe that containers are the future carrier of uh, reusable scientific software contents, if you will, and uh, and GCF. Is, is going to be a platform for delivering uh, large-scale repeatable workflow analysis across international boundaries. And, uh, and well, perhaps I suppose you might be thinking that this sounds, sounds all good, but, but this is very much like, 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 like what, you know, like, like what things that sort of used to happen in the good old grid days with executing jobs on distant high performance computing systems through, uh, through these, uh, these systems, queuing systems, and uh, and uh, collecting collecting the results. Well, a key a key difference here is that the, the user is the one responsible for 
for you know for the containers applications which can be replicated to uh, to to uh, the remote container clouds so uh, so in the grid environments once you put in time then software packages were were typically installed by 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 by, by individuals with with access rights and systems administrators and uh, and it was kind of difficult to ensure that packages were exactly the same in, in different uh, in different systems so uh, so yeah so but how then about the actual technology and and the so-called work execution engine or wes that uh, that's the that's that's the, one of the key components here that the guys at the alliance for for genomics have built so uh, so i give you a bit of a deeper take on the goals and and the approach that that we decided to take in in the task in work package four so moving towards taking full advantage of modern cloud tech in in the world of research and 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 perhaps here in the given our challenge in exchanging resources and cloud infrastructure we sort of started by asking ourselves that well that what can we do to facilitate uh, taking people who have algorithms and tools and workflows and bringing those workflows to the data in the many places that the data lives but still knowing you get uh, compatible results independent of, of where your data is actually uh, living so a little bit on on the cloud work stream standards and, and therefore uh, kind of our task uh, as a team had has to come up with a way to sort of facilitate the the, the definition of, of these portable portable workflows and, and, and the sharing of them and, and the execution of them and, and again hitting hitting that blue text at the bottom of, of this slide so you see the bullet that says that the execution of portable workflows in your preferred computer environment and your preferred storage environment so that's really the point here that's the portability that we've been we've been looking for so uh, so what the alliance and elixir have done over the last last number of years and where they're now is that that they have have made in the kind of a dent in this by by saying that uh, that the global alliance support the use of cwl so that's uh, that's the scripting scripting language that we're we're, we're 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 using here primarily also also on the bioinformatics side they, they have have support for something called whittle so it's a wdl the Whittle language for for how one actually defines these border workflows, and I'll, I'll show you a little later on in, in the demo how this this happens, and then packages them them up so that they can put can be put kind of in a box and, and take them from where where you are to where you want to to run it, and and meaning stand in, in a sense standard West and, and a tools API that comes with uh, with 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 Wes. So um, so workflows in more detail. So, uh, so, so the West workflow execution API is what we we rely on in, in GCF. And if you're if you're interested, then then here's a number of uh, here's a number of links. Uh, these are easier to 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 actually kind of find from the Global Alliance site. But but I'm sort of giving them them here, and uh, and uh, and uh, and you can you can find the repository that has the actual API definitions and using Open API. And, and the test that, that that they've been using to show that this this standard actually works across multiple uh, across multiple environments. So so again, why does it matter? Well, the general goal is that we we want to be able to do that portable execution, essentially one analysis running in a lot of places, and what that will enable is in a in a sense that the two sides will will benefit. So both the people who are using the tools and the people who are building the tools, they will both get more reach and, and more power it's, that's 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 the way we, we think about this and for the things that they need to get their job done so uh, so so for instance if, if you're a tool tool builder if you're someone who's who's creating a new 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 and nice analysis method then then you so, so you have you have a, a algorithm method that you think in some domains is better than a state of the art or, or you sort of like to find out how how it compares to other then, 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 then it certainly would be nice if, if you could package that up and 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, work once and then say that here here, here it is to, to the community and and have, have any of you who, who want to try 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 this out 
definitely be able to try it out in, uh, in your environment on your data, whether or not you're ever going to actually show, show your data to, or, 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 or whether you sort of trust, trust the tool developer at that, at that level. So, uh, so, so, so essentially there's possibility to work with the tool provider. So, uh, so, so, so as a, as a tool pro provider, it lets, it lets the tool provider get a lot more reach and therefore a lot more, more value from, from the investment in, in the tools for the researcher. And for a researcher, it means that in addition to giving access to more, getting access to uh, more tools, it also means you can run, run, now run compatible analysis across data in many places. And that's an important part here so that you can actually run it across data in many different, different places. So, so for instance, if you have uh, a thousand pictures of uh, say planktons, for instance, we actually have a case like that. That's sort of been, 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 been a discussion. So you got a uh, hundred thousand pictures or you got a million genomes, very important on bioinformatics side. And you would like to be able to do some common reasoning across those, then, then there are many reasons why that matters. First step is being able to do common reasoning across them and analyzing them the same way. So as we make it easy to take a workflow and take analysis and run it the same way, in different environments with different policies, that increases the pool of available compatible and comparable results that we can work with. So, so that's why we want this ability for a tool builder to build their tool and have it run everywhere. And as a researcher can kind of consume that result in a known compatible, compatible way across. So, um, so, uh, so, so how do we do this then? Well, 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 the documentation is online. I have two, uh, two slides that are just excerpts of the highlights of, of the documentation about what the workflow execution service does. So this is in a nutshell, kind of a nutshell summary, which is kind of true and the features of the API are, are what you'd expect the first uh, here. So, 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 uh, uh, so basically you can say, please run this workflow on this data. So it defines a standard way to, to say that I want to run this tool and here and here are the inputs and unless you pass in parameters to the workflow to say whatever you, whatever you know, maybe I haven't, have a slightly different flavor or it, or, or maybe you want to use more compute resources or fewer compute resources. And, uh, and maybe you want to tune some sliding window, or something somewhere in the analysis. So, 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 so it kind of lets the workflow be more flexible in that way, if you want to. So, uh, so, uh, so, and then to actually check on a workflow that you sort of kicked off and, and see how it's going, cancel it if it gets stuck, troubleshooting if there's a problem, confirm what's completed, and things, things like 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 those 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 of that nature. So, so those. Kind of the key features of the API, of the API I, I hear. So, uh, so, so technically, technically, actually, this is pretty much it. This is the complete surface area of the uh, of the uh, documentation, and and uh, and uh, perhaps shouldn't go too much into into this. Uh, uh, but the, but this is what the API looks like. There's post method to say running workflow, a few interrogation methods to check on how it's going and then opportunity to cancel workflow, and get some overall information about the service. And again, uh, all the details, uh, well, all the details are in the documentation, uh, but it's uh, in a sense pretty straightforward to, to the needs we, we think. So, so then, uh, then what does this look like then in an NREN, in an NREN sort of, uh, from an NREN perspective and, and actually from from, from our participants now in, in work package four and, and, and task three. So, so, so here we have an architectural drawing of the cloud from Cloudflow service such as it looks like today. So, so we have the user up there on the left-hand side who's put together a workflow and that's in a CWL script. And we have the tools repository service, which, uh, which well, we use Docker Hub right now can certainly be, be, be your own own hub for containers. So, so the containers stored there and, and, uh, and uh, then the workflow execution service, which, uh, which distributed jobs to, to the appropriate task execution services. 
and the task execution services, and these are really running on on individual NREN container clouds. And right now we have uh, we have uh, we have container clouds at at, at, at at GRNet, so in Greece, at GAR, in, in Italy, Rome, and and then CSC at my my institution here in here, here in Finland. So uh, so on a technical level, then GRNet and GAR is actually running pure Kubernetes. Then what? Then while while CSC runs runs OpenShift. And uh, and uh, and then yeah, the data repository service for pulling and downloading downloading data. And all those sort of blue 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 balls that you see there, uh, circles that you see there uh, at the uh, at the NREN container clouds, and those are essentially the, the JWT tokens that sort of are uh, will flow. There's like actually a lot of work going on that part part still will flow through through the system. So, uh, but uh, but at this point in time, I should probably let me see. I'll sort of do a, a little demonstration here, so that you see what uh, what the uh, uh, what the interface is going to be look. What the interface is going to look like. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Theodor. Looking good. Uh, I work at the CSC, uh, Finland. You can probably sort of take and, it a little. Uh, I was at uh, group. Uh, today we will uh, two thirty. I think doing some uh, demo uh, uh, regarding uh, the giant project. Um, so in in, uh, in 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 the project uh, we use a, a schema, um, uh, which is the uh, first uh, started to be developed uh, in in the Elixir project in Greece, uh, and now we are. Uh, uh, continuing uh, using it to, and deploying it and uh, trying to improve it uh, as part of the giant uh, uh, cloud flow uh, uh, project. Um, so the web end for this uh, schema, uh, schema is essentially a platform or a portal uh, to submit uh, uh, like jobs, uh, workflows, sorry, workflows uh, into a computing environment. Uh, so it makes it easy for, for for um, users uh, to run uh, their workflow uh, in, a, uh, in a consistent way. Uh, and it's written in essentially in PHP. Um, uh, it, uh, you can log in to it uh, through a federated uh, uh, login platform. Uh, but for this demo, we are using a local uh, kind of deployment and uh, the login also is also uh, uh, will be done uh, locally. So first we try to log in here uh, with our username and password. Uh, yeah, then now uh, once logged, uh, we are logged in, we can see the, the actual interface that we, uh, we will be using for uh, for using the platform, uh, so the first uh, uh, you can you can see the first uh, there are a few uh, few few menus uh, that you are presented with. Uh, so the first one is uh, this uh, software. So the software is essentially where where you upload uh, and um, uh, see uh, your your uh, essentially your images and your your, your uh, workflows. Um, and then uh, there is this uh, uh, workflows, uh, which is uh, kind of similar in, 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 in a way with, with the software as well. Uh, in both cases, you can use workflow uh, definitions. Uh, the only uh, difference between these uh, two is uh, that uh, the, the software uh, submits job directly to a Kubernetes cluster, uh, while uh, the workflows uh, actually use uh, uh, an, a middleware uh, called uh, ways uh, to, to kind of submit uh, the jobs. Um, so that is the kind of the main difference. Otherwise, both can, can be used uh, with the workload, uh, workflow definition. Uh, then um, there is this uh, data button where uh, you can uh, kind of uh, a look uh, uh, and access your data, uh, maybe upload uh, new, new data, uh, data to, the, to the platform, as well as get uh, the results uh, uh, from there. Uh, and then there are uh, also, uh, this, uh, there is also this uh, job history 
menu where you can uh, kind of look back uh, to your uh, already uh, completed jobs uh, and see uh, with, with their, uh, like the status of their, their uh, uh, how they are going. So their status essentially, are they complete? Uh, did they fail or did they uh, get canceled or, 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 um, or are they still running? So this is kind of the, the log that you get about uh, the, the software that you are running currently um, or, or in the past. And then there are, um, uh, there is a help menu also with, where you can access uh, more, more help. Uh, and then there is some administration options where you can uh, see the, the admin screen if you are an, ad, an admin. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can change maybe the system configuration. Uh, maybe you can also approve uh, like image requests, but by, by some people uh, who have already developed some sort of uh, uh, image or software and they want to uh, make uh, their, their, their uh, uh, software or images uh, pub uh, publicly used in this platform. Uh, and then there is this uh, log, login and log out uh, button there. Uh, so uh, for the demo, maybe we can use uh, the software uh, and then we, I will show you, show you or uh, we will go through how to upload a, 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 an image or a workflow and uh, or try to run uh, that. Okay, so uh, in the case of the software, uh, you say add image. Uh, and then uh, you will have to have uh, uh, then to fill some some of some of the mandatory fields. So in this case, uh, the software name. So let's say Ice Splitter. Uh, we can say a number. Uh, it's just a name uh, over there. Then how, which which version uh, you are you are at? Maybe you can you can have like multiple versions of the same software also. And then you can have, a, you can put like a, at least a simple description. Uh, so in this case, uh, hash and uh, input with MD5 and MD5. And then now, uh, and then you can change the visibility as well. And then here you can say uh, what kind of, uh, 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 like an uh, input uh, you have, is it uh, uh, like a workflow uh, uh, file or or not or, or something else? Uh, in our case, we can supply uh, like a workflow uh, file here, uh, and then you can put a um, uh, place where you you mount. Uh, uh, so, so you can you can say uh, where where to mount uh, your data in the container that will be created from the image. So let's say uh, data, also the output mount point we can put there. Uh, yeah, there are some specific uh, uh, things that you can add for uh, MPI kind of jobs, but for now we have a simple job. Uh, so we continue, then we uh, browse our file, our definition. Uh, let's say here hash is clear in P5, and then we put, uh, open. I will show later the, the file contents here, and then we kind of submit our. Uh, our workflow to the system and then it takes time. Uh, so our image is actually uploaded, um, so it should be listed uh, in the in the. In the uh, so here you can see uh, our um, software. Uh, so then uh, after this, you can actually run it, or if you want to uh, edit it before that, you can come here, check uh, what is already there. And uh, yeah, so at this point, maybe we can see the, uh, the actual content of the the workflow as well here. Um, so we say, let's do okay. Uh, so here uh, is a, a very simple workflow. Uh, so uh, it, essentially what it does is it, it kind of hashes uh, an input file uh, with MD5 uh, 
in order to do that, it needs uh, this uh, OpenSSL. Uh, it, it uses this uh, OpenSSL software or command, uh, and uh, that is actually uh, already packaged in a nice way uh, in, in, in this image. Uh, so this image is residing in, in, uh, in the Docker Hub. So this is uh, the way to address where, where this workflow uh, pulls the image uh, or the environment it needs uh, to run the actual uh, algorithm. And algorithm implementation is found in this command, open, uh, open SSL uh, uh, software. Uh, and then we kind of say, uh, because this, this implements a lot of hashing algorithms, uh, and, and one of them is MD5. So we give uh, the command and the argument that needs to be uh, run for this workflow. Uh, and then we say the input is kind of a file. Uh, so this can be uh, uh, maybe selected, which we can come, which we will see it later. And the output will go to the STD out uh, or some kind of log, uh, log file. Uh, and that is basically what it says here. Um, so now we can go back to the software and see, uh, try to run our uh, our software. So here uh, we can click run. Uh, then we have a few uh, um, few parameters we need to input. So where the input and output should be. Uh, so th these are actually. Uh, coming from the, the data. So, so you, you have to have these folders in place before you can run. If, uh, uh, you can't do that in, in the data section. Uh, so we have already some uh, data for the input and output. So we have this source, source folder uh, already pre-configured there. Uh, and uh, now we, we supply some input file for the, the hashing algorithm so this is a simple uh, kind of javascript file uh, that we can use as an input um, and then you can uh, play around with the number of cores and uh, the memory you want so for larger jobs you can increase the number of cores and uh, the memory as well but this is a simple uh, example so we can move ahead and run it and then after this we can go to the job history and see that it is running now. And then after some time, it should be able to complete. Um, so, uh, uh, so if we kind of refresh uh, this page, uh, then now this after some time is completed. Uh, so then after that, we can see the, maybe the details of it. Uh, so the software that we run in this task is a hash creator fix which we just created. Now it is in a complete status when it is started, when it stopped or completed, and how much uh, time it, it took to do that. So, and these kind of informations are there. Uh, and uh, then we can see quickly the log of that uh, output. So yeah, so here the, the hash of this input file we supplied and then uh, that well, hash, that is the output of the, the algorithm. So that's maybe it. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, so 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 this is essentially what can be done. Uh, the same uh, approach works for workflows as well. So you can add nice uh, new workflows. Uh, it's basically the same interface uh, as well. Uh, and you can use uh, also. Uh, Essentially, more uh, workflow definition here as well, and uh, that's maybe the, the demo we have today. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Okay, Dan, I right. start share my screen. So, uh, thanks, 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 Darko. That that sort of worked pretty well. I hope you guys had a chance to. To, I sort of had to zoom my, uh, you know, put it on 150 percent my 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 zoom uh, factor here for uh, for for the video conferencing software. So, uh, but at least for myself, then could sort of follow the 
the, the input text without glasses <laughs> uh, with with that kind of a zooming zooming factor here. So so good. Thanks thanks again, Darko. That sort of worked worked really well. So uh, so I'll I'll share my screen again here. Let's see if I'm going to be able to uh, if it's going to get blurry here again or or if if if, if this is going to last. But I don't have many slides left. And I also hear your presentation. So right. So let's have... see. Let's see. Is this does this one now look kind of sharp? Mm. I, I I certainly hope so. So, or, yeah, so, uh, so good. So, so yeah, so this oh, was Dan, the... Dan, sorry, it's not good. Not good, okay. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Okay, if you could, could you, so this is number 17, apparently, on my... Just screen. a second, just a second, uh, try it again, just a second. Uh, it's the file I sent you. My screen and uh, your presentation. Well, yeah, perfect. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Just a second. I go to the uh, into the yeah. full screen. Yes. Okay. You see. Yeah, I think yeah, there this we slide, go. Yeah. That's, the, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just tell me, Darko. Please, next slide, and I <laughs> go to the next slide. No problem. Yeah. yeah. You can start. Thanks. I just have to get my my zoom vector back, so I can see what's on the slide. Yeah, it's looking. This is okay. No, I think you did something. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So that was the uh, that was the, uh, the, the 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 demonstration. So so we we sort of put this together, and uh, and and you know, I I hope you guys could follow at least approximately what was going on there. So, uh, so in order to have something really small and, and simple, then we, we sort of use this, this we, we sort, of, <laughs> sort of thought that, okay, we're computer scientists. So we, we, we think that hashes are cool. So, so this hash splitting demo, then, then we used uh, the SSL container from, from, from Docker Hub there. So, uh, so which has, the, has MD5 as one of the, one of the algorithms. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's what we sort of thought, that, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of take this demo. The guys in Elixir also, 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 also has this one, albeit a little bit, a little bit differently. So uh, in order to have something that really runs very quickly to show you, show you from start to end how this, this, this is supposed to work. Obviously, for, uh, for more involvement and, and, and real experiments, then, then you know, you're going to have much, much more elaborate elaborate script than the, than the, than the 50, perhaps 15, 15 lines that we had in, had in that, uh, that demonstration. So, uh, so, but, but about the, uh, about the, about, so yeah, so this is where we're at at the moment. And, and thanks a lot to our, our good friends at, at GRNet and, uh, and, uh, and to, to, to the guys behind the, the schema platform that sort of helped uh, that sort of uh, who's that's that's the framework that we're we're we're, we're using here so uh, so uh, it's built it's built in php so uh, you can find it on on on, on github and, uh, and i think i think i should have the, the links here later on uh, on on in, in the end of this this presentation so uh, so 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 you know but uh, but but what when it comes to the actual objectives here on of our of our uh, uh, of our beta phase, because this is certainly is in beta, and I should warn you that that you know for for real users get use cases at this point in time, then we're gonna gonna sort of there's gonna be some hand holding that's gonna be gonna be needed. So, but really, what we're looking for are are actual these pilot pilot projects, and that's that's, that's one of the uh, one of the primary objectives of the beta phase. So, so I established these pilot projects where we can sort of to go and try things try things out in kind of sort of how should I say, a predefined environment together with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the users and then see how they, how they sort of feel about it and try to evaluate the, the customer experience here. And, uh, and, and then of course, also look at, at what's, what the general readiness of this prototype is. We're not planning on doing this forever, obviously. So, so we have a milestone in the end of the year this is an internal milestone, not a giant milestone, where we're essentially gonna, gonna, gonna have a closer look and sort of do a, do a, do a, do a roadmap validation. And, 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 and there's certainly gonna be bugs along the road. 
code here. So, so try to identify uh, identify those. So, so uh, hard hard at work with with sort of adapting adapting the schema interface already towards, for instance, containerizing it. That's that's, that's something that we've, we've we've been sort of working working hard with, and uh, and then to sort of have these uh, workflows run in, in different environments on quite on, on different container clouds. So uh, there's a there's a, there's a number of issues. There's going to be issues. There's still issues there, and there's going to be additional issues along along the road, obviously. But um, but we're we're actually in a pretty good place, we think, right now. Approval in the documentation. That's uh, that's definitely going to be a, a need. We have uh, well all the basic functionality that that was demonstrated there. It's really 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 sort of visible in the in the manual. But obviously, the more the more context you have, the better it's gonna it's gonna be. And uh, and then well, improve support procedures. So that's 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 obviously going to be an, an important part here. So darker next slide, if you please. So uh, so so the way that this is going to work. So 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 we're talking about the service here, but the end result is really going to be a software package, and uh, and uh, documentation that will be available for download from from a publicly accessible repository. So so that's kind of the end product that we're 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 we're, we're, we're sort of uh, working towards. So, uh, but uh, but for for the duration of the Gen four three project, then we're gonna have we sort of have a have a hosted service that's experimental and which is going to be up and running throughout throughout the the, 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 the Gen four three project. Whatever's going to happen in Gen five, well, Gen five one, I believe it's it's going to be called remains to be remains to be seen obviously if we're successful then it would be cool to 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 of course continue but but for for for, for 2022 we're essentially gonna gonna you know, work on the soft on the software and uh, and uh, and uh, and sort of make it make it as good as as possible so that people people potentially can then can then run it on their end so and with people meaning endwards here so uh, so basically, for instance, all the institutions that you notice there. So, so in GRNet, they obviously have have this user interface uh, that Theodorus was was demonstrating up and up and running. So uh, obviously, obviously, many many other institutions could run the user interface. So uh, so uh, so, uh, and that's uh, that's of course uh, the aim here that we sort of would like to strive strive towards. And uh, and then uh, well, software software support. So, uh, so, so, well, uh, so, 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 uh, whatever is going to happen, happen after, after the end of Gen 4.3, but, uh, but, but basically have email for help desk and technical support, um, bug fix, bug fix, fixing and, 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 and so on. So, uh, and, uh, and here's actually the, uh, the GCF uh, services support link, uh, that we sort of provide right now. So a bit, bit more. If you could take the next slide, Darko, thank you. So a bit more about the future roadmap. So uh, so 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 here on the left hand side, and you see what's what's been delivered so so far. So uh, so uh, one 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 heavy 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 item here, which is definitely going to be within the six to, six to twelve months, is, is really the Edu Teams integration. Uh, that's 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 a that's a primary objective here. Obviously, we want to have the federated access access working. Working and, and and also try to uh, I mentioned the 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 the, 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 the alliance uh, push towards having having something called a passport technology, so uh, that's very cool technology, very much working working project progress as I as I understand it understand it today. So what with basically a token based system for really specifying also access right to to data sets. So a key a key how should I say a key issue in in the bioinformatics space, so uh, so so uh, how how specify who who's got access to which which data sets at, at which uh, at, at, at you know individual institutions? So a lot of work going on on at that end, and we're sort of following those developments. But but we're essentially I'm going to sort of implement technologies as they become become usable. But but we're not sort of participating in that work per per se. So uh, we're really, really focusing on trying to sort of get edu teams up and running. In Elixir, they they have Elixir AI, which uh, which is which is which is uh, in production and really sort of a great, great, uh, great environment, well, great system for for handling AI. 
in uh, in the in, in, in the chart and Enron space we're focusing on on NDTs. So uh, and uh, and a uh, bit of look what we're planning for the graphical user interface and a bit more localization potentially other languages session manning, ma management there we want to want to sort of do better better error handling and, uh, and, uh, and uh, potentially restore sessions and so on in case of crashes accounting is something that's really missing right now and uh, and and, uh, and, and, and and yeah so uh, tracking functionality so 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 which is still as you can probably understand is being in beta still it's still not not quite there so uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and yeah uh, anything else I should I should sort of point out. So uh, so uh, so uh, well, could sort of point out that that well, oh, we we sort of obviously your HPC uh, at my institution. That's an exciting, very exciting thing, as as I'm sure at many other institutions around uh, supercomputing centers and NRES around Europe. So uh, so uh, so uh, looking at potential possibilities for for kind of capitalizing on those on those awesome resources and kind of sort of have a potential for your HPC test endpoints would be would be really cool really cool we we, we think and then sort of have a, a bit more more advanced data staging right now it's 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 fairly rudimentary so uh, with, uh, with with object storage based repositories actually all the endpoints that I showed showed there in architectural map and then really run safe based uh, safe based object storage and uh, and that sort of would be be very very nice to sort of be able to uh, to 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 sort of accommodate for for here kind of sort of require some some additional work though probably should should round off round off start to round off this this talk here we have uh, some uh, some some useful links we we believe so this is where we where we sort of have uh, have have you know all the good things that we've done so far where they're stored stored at and described here you see the development team so the the, the, the are sort of great institutions that have, have sort of you know are behind this work, and uh, and I think if you darker sort of take the next slide, then then we're we're pretty much done here. So thanks thanks a lot for your attention so far, and and uh, and Maria, do we sort of have? I suppose we have some time for you know yeah. questions discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. I stopped share my screen, so. Uh... Thanks. Now we can switch to the questions, comments, discussion, or uh, if anyone has something to say or comment and ask, uh, Dan is here and available and welcome to answer on your question. So you're welcome. I could, of course, you know, in order to sort of give you, give you a little time to sort of think about things, uh, I could, of course, say that, that the Orsha kinds are I should say muse a little bit about about the fact that that, that one one thing here is that what we're kind of sort of looking for here is really a method to sort of capitalize on the on the you know large data sets that we noticed are are, are becoming more and more prevalent at at, at you know in in at NRENS and uh, at, at the national national supercomputing centers and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know just a uh, just to share, 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 you know, size of these data sets that are are now sort of becoming, becoming available, and and, and sort of how should I say the march of open open science, and the possibilities to really access access you know very very valuable data, which is uh, which is open and uh, and, uh, and and available. But where where the problem really is that that you sort of essentially need to get compute close to where the data, where the data is. So that's 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 one of one of the that's one of the how should I say real drivers here for 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 the work that we've been we've been doing, and uh, and obviously of course I mean you sort of have excellent opportunities to use also commercial cloud services and and, and actually all of the work that's happening here certainly you know there could be desk you know endpoints uh, execution endpoints also in commercial clouds that's entirely entirely possible. So, uh, so as long as someone is willing to to sort of attach a credit card to those accounts, and that's 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 totally totally possible here. Obviously, since we're working with uh, with endpoints that that sort of have an have an investment in community clouds, so they have their own cloud infrastructures. I think actually GRNet Greece, they're they're, they're they sort of have been building theirs. The long, I think it's fair to say I might be lying now, but 
uh, as far as I know, then they've sort of been, been the longest in this game, starting way back uh, 10 years in time, at least. So, uh, so, so, so there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, some NRENs have significant investments. Uh, our friends at GAR have a very, uh, quite sort of elaborate, elaborate environment, uh, which is, which is, which is with, with a large number of large number of users, so academic users, both, both researchers and, uh, and and students, as as I understand it, and uh, and and similar similar case here in here in Finland at my my institution. So uh, so we. We sort of uh, we, we we run these clouds in production for for large number of users, and we're also very much looking at at hosting hosting large large data sets of various types. Obviously, some of these data sets are are are, are going to be from coming from the life sciences, so 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 genomic data, things of things of that nature, where it's going to be where there's an element, of course, of sensitive data as well uh, attached. So we're we're not sort of looking into into that space here in here in this this project, but but the sensitive data part is is of course there very much in the, on, on the life science spectrum. But for instance, like for, for weather data and so on, there's a there's a lot of really really valuable information available. That's 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 quite quite open, and and I'm sure that that that, that you you guys know know other examples of that. So so this thing with getting compute closer to where the data lives, then that's, that's kind of a driving factor here. Thank you, Dan. And also, I want to mention that uh, all uh, what you saw today, presentation and the video, and this uh, recorded video will be available uh, to you uh, later. So on the wiki page, and if you have any question later or comments, you can contact directly Dan or his team. And I, I think that Dan will be happy to answer on your uh, questions. So, absolutely. So, uh, so please, please fire off, fire off emails or, or, or give us a, give us a shout, shout. You know, at the, uh, at the appropriate channel. So, uh, love to talk and, and, uh, and if you sort of have a take, something for you guys to take home, and potentially if you hear of, of some interesting, some interesting pilot project, then we're, we're obviously all ears. So, uh, so perhaps the take home would be that you know there's a, there's a, there's capacity available. For people that that sort of have exist potentially have an existing workflow, and obviously it doesn't have to be in the CWL language specified. You know, it in CWL will sort of help out with 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 with, with sort of doing that. But uh, but essentially, essentially, if you have a you know a number of steps and some software, so uh, so uh, so and some data, and uh, that's possible. Okay, we have a question here. So uh, I think it's Mario. Mario, please. Hi. Well, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I, I was just wondering if um, I'm sort of uh, taking a look at EL in this moment uh, within the community, and I was wondering if you think that uh, in general, given the the collaborations you had, this this workflow is is uh, is well suited, generally speaking, for. E health and bio, let's say bioinformatic related workflows like Elixir or, or similar ones. So I was just naively thinking if uh, dealing with this EL task force that we are organizing with Ingeant, it oh. could be an idea to, to have that a chance. Really cool. That yeah. would be really cool. And yeah, I can understand that. You know, this has been so very much with, I mean, workflows obviously being something that bioinformaticians are very much, how should I say, in tune with. So, uh, so you have, uh, uh, I mean, there are if you're sort of looking at looking at commission funded funded projects. Then, for instance, you know the Galaxy environment that's very very popular. Exactly. So, yeah. so, so that's and that's very much with. That's obviously very much with bioinformatics. Just, just I think you know, or in many ways. Because, because you know, that's 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 the space where, where things have been coming from. It's a little bit like like in the grid days with with I don't know if, if people here sort of remember like G light, G light, the G light, you know, oh, yeah. G light in the days, and and obviously EGI is still very much active in this space. Okay. So uh, coming from physics and so on. So uh, so, but I, I should point out that that you know this thing with workflows. I mean, it's not not sort of geared towards you know some specific domain. It really is something that you can use in many in 
you know, for, for, for yeah, the general right. case. And we kind of sort of thought that, you know, having it this, this, this kind of perhaps a little, a little silly hash splitter <laughs> demo, we sort of point out that, hey, you can sort of use Use pretty, pretty, pretty simple things also as a workflow. Obviously, no one would sort of do that. You can sort of run that easily on your laptop. Yeah, sure. but uh, but 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 you can you can understand the general case when you have uh, when you have very large data sets and you essentially want to do the same thing on top of large large amounts of data. So yeah. large amounts of files typically. So uh, so like people sort of analyzing plankton images, and I can tell you there really are people that sort of are sort of, and there are lots and lots of planktons and you absolutely need to move in order to classify those. You don't want to sit and look, look at those pictures. Oh, you right. want to use machine learning for, for, for an, an analysis and for, you know, for an analysis and so on. You would, you would go mad, I think, if you were to sort of, but, but, but these things are, are very, these things are very important and uh, sometimes a little hard to perhaps. Sure. Satellite imagery, I think, is one 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 of the areas so that sort of comes immediately to mind. But it's it's also it's kind of interesting. So 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 you know, we really so so what I've seen personally is that that you know things are really there's a lot of a lot of activities going on. Like for instance, in natural lang natural language processing, mm -hmm. so, uh, where you can easily spend large amounts of funds on uh, on GPU capacity. And uh, and perhaps I'm talking too much here, probably, but uh, but 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 perhaps to sort of give you a takeaway here, also one of the one of the cool things we think here with, with sort of having the possibility to specify workflow flow here, workflows here is that that well perhaps you'll do most of the analysis at home, you know, if you have a workflow. But if you, for instance, need a large number of GPUs, thinking actually about your HPC here, you know, in a way where there's going to be massive amounts of of GPUs available, then perhaps it would be cool to sort of run parts of the analysis on, on GPU capacity. And if that's not something that you have in house and, and you want to incorporate into your workflow, then, then this could be the way to, to do it. At least this is the way that the guys in Elixir are, are, are looking at it. And I think I think this sort of been, and it's not only an Elixir, I should point point that out. So 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 this is really you know an international an international endeavor. So very much thinks America's NIH very, very active, obviously here. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, 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 so it's really a world, worldwide effort that's sort of behind, behind this thing. So, uh, and we sort of thought that, that, you know, as part of the offering, the cloud, cloud services part, given that, given that we sort of wanted to do something on the pan-European level then uh, with, with, with these container clouds, then we sort of thought that okay, this could be a cool thing to to try out and see if we sort of get traction. Might be though that we're not going to get traction. Maria, please. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, say a call of action here because we we are looking for pilot users, and it's right. a, a chicken and egg problem here, um, as it is ready right now, and we would like to find as many. Um, different users as possible, just to show what the variety of uses can be. Um, so if you know anybody who would like to test this solution out, we would be really happy. And you are always welcome to, to also either contact me or uh, Darko or Dan, anybody from the cloud team. So yeah. We can pass it on. Good pitch. Good. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I just can thank you very much, uh, everyone, for uh, being called call today. And I'm very sorry for our technical problem we had today, but I hope that this solved <laughs> problems. I think you sort of you sort of solved it very elegantly, Godarko. So thanks, thanks a lot for helping helping out on that front. I wonder if it was a bandwidth problem. I have sort of. Uh, yeah so uh, so 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 uh, it's good that we had the backup for everything so yeah 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 that's good. the way with this that's yeah. the way with this i can tell you actually i sort of had yeah. to run change the media player just before the presentation because uh, because apparently the microsoft one did not sort of you know work yeah might have it's been okay. a memory problem also so never mind so never mind. it's okay worked really well and so as I, as I told, uh, told before, everything uh, will be available online from uh, this simple share, including uh, video, including uh, uh, demo video and the presentation. And uh, once again, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, have a nice day. Uh, have the rest of the day. <laughs> have a nice rest of the day, everyone. Thanks and bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye